people of the internet, it's Amanda and four days of video. I'm super excited because I'm here to talk about Dragon Zakura 2. Now, this is a drama that I genuinely enjoyed from start to finish. And but before that, I just have to clear things out. I didn't really see like the first series that aired, I think over a decade ago or that around that time frame. Um, but I was super excited about this because of um, Takahashi Kaito, member of King and Prince, who's also part of the cast. But I ended up like falling in love with the series. And even if, you know, I, I didn't really think of, you know, catching up on like see the first series or anything like that or now that this one is wrapped up i don't think i'll still see like the original one um for very like preferential reasons um but overall like i think as a standalone series which i'll be elaborating more on later this still works and this definitely will take you in an emotional roller coaster ride that is very very good and very very interesting and personally for me like i definitely fell in love with like the ensemble with what it stood for and how it sort of like modernized um like modernized the take on 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 this type of thing like as compared to say um teacher dramas back in the early 2000s there's definitely a shift here like again i'm not sure how the first series was but but there's definitely a shift in terms of tone for this one in my opinion just generally that i would want to elaborate on and even if you're not a student like me like i'm no longer a student far from you know being a student anymore <laughs> um i still genuinely loved what the series stood for and that's why i'm making this video so yeah and i honestly i feel like given like with tbs so um with dramas like for example hana yori dango and then they did hana no Chihara in 2018 for hanzao naoki so they after so many years like i think it was seven years or so they did a sequel for that last year um and then now for dragon zakara what I noticed is that they're really good in terms of creating a nostalgic, like grabbing your attention with a nostalgia of how those series were um, in, in the beginning, but creating something fresh and something new and something that could stand on its own um, and can be enjoyed on its own. And of course, there are like cameos here and there that's very, very interesting and very, very um, what they call this, like enjoyable, especially for those who've seen like the first um like the first installments of the series but again yeah so with that so i'm gonna be talking about reasons why you should check it out i'll try to really not spill any spoilers except for the ones that are already glaringly there so let's just get to it now here's where the story starts so again as i mentioned earlier it doesn't really like I don't know like give you a montage of what happened in the first series because what they did was they followed the timeline of you know how it really was like so many years has passed it's impossible that um sakuragi sensei played by abe hiroshi has i don't know like has only his memories from from that time to to this one so they sort of like recap the recap the thing in a very expositiony manner but in an effective way so we find out that he's continued to do his um his thing where he sort of like transforms schools into prep schools for todai or tokyo university tokyo daigaku um yeah and but then for some reason because of a certain incident he's gone missing for over a year so that's basically like the gist of the main conflict at the beginning of the story. Now we get introduced to Mizuno, who is played by Nagasawa Misami. And she's, um, I think for, for people who's absolutely enjoyed like the first series, she's a part of that. She's a part of, uh, of the Todai special class um, in that particular series. Um, so having her as a regular in, in this one, it, it's definitely one of those, you know, moments of connecting it from the old to the new, but it doesn't necessarily reference like her experiences or any flashbacks or whatever that happened in this entire series. It's really more of she is the success story that sort of like connects the goals of you know this series from the previous one um and 
yeah so definitely like there's that there's the relationship of from from sakuragi sensei being her 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 teacher um it it's become like a peer thing now with the two of them so again it's definitely this this idea of so very similar to how it is in real life where your former mentors sort of like become your peers over time and there's this exchange of you know you're no longer a student and you've had your own experiences and that kind of thing that kind of relationship that changes from when you're a student to becoming an, an adult on your own and i don't know like that in itself like her presence in this drama adds that factor to that adds that layer to it now we get introduced obviously like this is a school that's different there's a lot more like freedom in the way that it's being run like uh it's not the type of school that's very conventional um and traditional unlike dramas from the early 2000s where the main problem is that the school has to be a certain way a certain like um i don't know conservatism to it and then there's this one problem um one problem class that ruins the entire thing it's not like that anymore but here it's more of like a normal normal school setting where students aren't exactly 100% problematic but it's really more of like a newer kind of system where um the the school chairman believes that you know a freer type of education where where children can learn in an environment where they don't have like they can be a little bit carefree with their choices that's the environment that the school is in um and at first like you would you would think that the chairman is actually like the villain of the story because she's totally against the idea of you know creating like making the school into into a prep school like a university prep school or anything like that because she strongly believes that students can you know like they, they don't need that kind of pressure like they can go about you know just learning and being more themselves or anything like that which in essence is what early 2000s dramas are trying to aspire to teach and then now this is what the school environment is trying to like propagate um and what i love about this is again now it points me out to like one of the reasons why i love this drama is because it doesn't antagonize any of the educators um it shows that they are trying what they think is right for the students and the role of sakuragi sensei in this one is not exactly to abolish that kind of system but to remind them that freedom is okay freedom is good having students express themselves and be themselves is absolutely a wonderful idea it's just that since they're still young guidance is still needed like it's it's not necessarily an extreme where where you can be whoever you want to be you can be as free as whoever you want to be but then that leads to being directionless and being to carefree to not think about your future anymore so it's really having that kind of balance of being able to decide what you want to do in life but at the same time being guided that you can have better options and you can exhaust these options and try for these options and like push you to your maximum ability while still being able to be your own person and i think that's definitely like the bigger message of this drama that i absolutely loved it gave that kind of balance between those two things which i think in the early 2000s it was really more of like be yourself discover yourself blah 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 which is good but at the same time like this one um it it balances it out in a way that um one way or another you have to grow up you have to be an adult and you have to discover yourself prior to that but at the same time there's ha there has to be a balance between that and preparing for a future that wouldn't just make you into a totally carefree but directionless person so there's that point now as for the ensemble for this particular drama Again, as I mentioned earlier, initially I watched it because of Gaito from King and Prince. Like I've been seeing the drama, like their dramas and checking them out and absolutely like I again, it's very similar to Necha no Koi Pito where I just watched it for him and then eventually ended up falling in love with the narrative of the entire drama. It's the same thing with this one because 
um, he's definitely like one of the main, like part of the core group of the students who are entering, you know, the special class. And that's not exactly a spoiler considering that it's kind of like a given that everyone in the post, the main poster of the drama is going to be a part of the class anyway. But obviously, there's like a back and forth as to who's getting in and who's not getting in and stuff like that. So just a quick rundown of the people who are going to be part of the Todai Senka. There's um, Seto, there's Kaide, there's Nao, there's Amano, there's um, Kenta, there's um, Kosugi, there's Fuji. And then we have these two like weirdos from the first episode who sort of like went in there somehow but not exactly as part of like the main circle circle if you know what i mean so that's basically like the core group that you know that gets focused on in this particular series each of them what i like about this is it's not really like we get a taste of the whole you know yankee aspect of it which is somehow a theme in early 2000s or any teacher dramas of this genre for some reason we get we got a taste of that in the first episode um where students are being rebellious and anything like that um in the most extreme gangstery way possible but overall like the core theme like the core team i mean in this in this drama our students are actually relatable in a way like there's this one who is an orphan who's running a small family business with his older sister um, who has to deal with certain mon money problems. There's this one who has very overbearing parents that wants her to pursue something else other than, you know, going to university and trying out things that that she wants to try out. There's this one who has a very confusing like family setup where her father doesn't want her to go to university. We have Kenta, who I absolutely adore, and I feel like the actor who played him is really, really good in terms of, you know, he's he's um, he's a student with special needs, um, and again, given that you know how students usually view people like that, especially in 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 a setup where it's it's not exactly like it's it's a usual mix of like students, and then usually for people with special needs, they go to special schools, but then because of the setup of of this particular school like he's allowed to like mingle with other students and therefore he's sort of like become an he's an outcast and like stu other students view him differently um but there's a beautiful message taught in this drama again with regard to like how cases like these are handled and how it should be like how 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 it should be I don't know, like how their gift should be flourished or be nurtured and anything like that. So there's that. So and then there's the student who's very, very hardworking, who doesn't exactly have that super mega heavy backstory. It's just that they just love studying and they're pushing themselves to the limit because of certain goals and like that. That kind of mix of students and um somehow you can relate to each of them because they're not exactly like extreme caricatures of 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 i don't know people that you see in manga or anything like that like they're they feel like real people and that's what makes this group you know somewhat like you immediately like fall in love with them and want to see their growth and there's that um another thing that i like about this is very similar to how the teachers weren't made into like the antagonists of the story even parents like they they're not exactly like the best parents <laughs> they're not perfect which i like about in most asian dramas because they portray parents as parents where they're they're also human and even if they're so annoying there's sometimes you just don't understand what goes on and why they don't want this or they think they're doing the best for their children but not really we also get a glimpse of not just like this one-way perception of them that they're bad or they're evil or anything like that. Like for example, one storyline which I wouldn't exactly spoil to um, who it belongs to, um, where she understands where her father is coming from um, and why he views things a certain way or how he views going to university into a certain way and how he reacts to certain things. Um, 
because of certain reasons like we also see a light to children understanding their parents and parents trying to understand their children and at the same time like parents also having their own issues and that translates to why they are as they are they aren't like just heartless monsters who just think one way but we get a lot of layers into the story that enriches our perception of characters even if they're major or minor um and that explains so many things like it, it 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 again it makes everything feel so real because it's not just not any character is just 2d or or or, or not any character is just one dimensional um because even if you know how briefly it is we learn about the backstories of these characters and the characters that are supporting them and what what leads to these types of circumstances and we see them you know it's not a total 180 degree turn from one point to another but there's development in how they slowly took in um this 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 new thing that their children are trying to achieve and that's there's some beauty to that now when it comes to moving on to the actual classes what's interesting is it sort of like gives you a different view of studying and education and um it it's 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 not just for students in my opinion like i feel like there are a lot of tips or study tips here that are very very helpful for students but even like for someone who wants to try something new you can apply like the principles that were taught in this particular drama in that thing that you want to learn about um whether it be learning a new language or just any hobby or skill really because there are a lot of like practical skills here and it also teaches you that sometimes you try so hard to be very complicated or view things one just one way because that's how we're trained especially when it comes to exams that there's just one right answer but then eventually like you learn that it's not really like that at all like there are different ways on how you can approach certain situations and that doesn't just apply to exams but also in real life and so there's that with all that said i have to make this sort of like special segment here before i end this video again the reason why i end up watching this is because of gaito and i absolutely think that as compared to anikoi i absolutely love that drama but not mainly for him because his role is definitely a lot smaller as compared to this one in dragon zakura 2 um but i've been tweeting about this for ever since the first episode of the drama started i feel like his acting has definitely improved i'm absolutely proud that he was able to um keep up and match up and exceed expectations of just playing along with these veteran and veteran actors as well as fresh faces um that are part of the cast and he definitely cried a lot in this particular series and absolutely loved how he portrayed Seto Akira given the not really complexity but because of the rawness of the character um I feel like it's definitely a huge improvement from how he played um Kazuki from Anikoi um and what's interesting about that is it's just a couple of months interval <laughs> he auditioned for the role over how many people and he got the role and i'm really really pleased because every single scene he's in i'm just absolutely amazed watching him and it's not like biases aside from you know him being a member of my current favorite idol group but i think apart from that there's somewhere along the line that i really forgot about the whole you know i watched this for kaito and everything like that because i got so engrossed with his character is set to Akira as well as the other characters in this particular drama. So I don't know, I just had to like insert this mini shout out um because of that like I've tweeted about this like I feel like almost every single week or not so but I keep on like tweeting about this every time he has a pivotal um scene in the drama but yeah, so that's the reason why I also have to include this in the video but there's that. Now, with that said, so I really 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 strongly 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 hope that you check this out whether or not you've seen the first series or you just want to like check this out first or anything like that. I feel like again, as much as the cameos are enjoyable, especially in the ending um uh, or the references to like the first series, it's still something that you can enjoy as it is and yeah. Um with that said, so tell me down in comments below. Have you seen this drama? Are you planning to see this drama? What are your thoughts? Blah blah blah. 
Let's talk it out down in the comments. You know the drill. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon in a new video.